Do you see this house right here? It's called a yurt. I live here with my wife and three small kids. And we've faced so many challenges since we've been here. And it makes me ask myself, do we make a mistake living here? Green friends, we are far fit. For those of you who don't know, four and a half years ago, we sold almost everything we had, left our house in the city to start our following our dream of starting a family homestead and a farm together. We left the city and we were going to live in this crazy thing called a yurt. And right off the bat, we faced a challenge when we were trying to set up our yurt. And for those of you who are thinking about setting up a yurt, this challenge is something you want to make sure you iron out from the beginning. And that challenge was building codes. Yes. County officials, county people who work with building codes, make sure you meet with them. We didn't do that, so things were drug out because they really didn't know what to do with us. And we didn't really know what to do either, so things were just taking a lot longer than they should have. Yeah, and in building codes vary from county to county, so if you're in one county and it's okay, uh, it may not be okay in another county. So you want to make sure that, uh, that you, you meet with your, your local officials. And with the building codes, one of the biggest things that I wish I would have known is that if you don't have a mortgage, if you're paying for your year and you're set up for yourself, that you don't have to go through as much red tape. So that's something I definitely recommend you all keep in mind if you're doing your own setup. The second challenge is adjusting from living in a bigger space to a smaller space. Most yurts, the setups and the size are smaller than most normal houses in the US unless you live in a big city like New York or something like that. So adjusting to a smaller space can be a challenge. For us, the biggest challenge with that <clears throat> came more from reducing the amount of stuff that we had in the bigger space. We've talked about that before in a previous video, so make sure you check that out. But having to get rid of a lot of things and downsize from all the stuff that you had before can be a challenge. It's going to be work to get rid of that stuff. So that's something you want to keep in mind too. Ariel, in, the, in a video that we did with Ariel McLaughlin, she talked about trying to start off with living in a smaller section of your house to prepare you to the adjustment of living in a smaller space in general. And I recommend that for you all if you're thinking of deciding to go into living in a yurt. And that's something we started to do in our house even when we were living in a city, is we were yeah. trying to live in a smaller section of our house to help us with the adjustment of going into a yurt. Well, and we realized we were only living in a small section. So that's what really got us into wanting to downsize from our house is because we're like, we spend the most of our time in our, you know, living room area and our kitchen and sleep in our bedroom. And that was it. So that is what really got us on the track of just living smaller. And with dealing with a smaller space, you also want to think about privacy. If you're used to having an area that you can go to and be private and to yourself, that can be a challenge. We decided to set up our yurt and do the layout where we have walls, where we actually have rooms sectioned off. So those are things you want to keep in mind, that you're in a smaller space and you want to think through how you're going to deal with privacy. Because everyone needs some time to themselves. so those are things to keep in mind. And another challenge that we face is, and it's related to the size, is the shape of the yurt itself. All the houses, most of the houses that we live in in our country, in most countries, are made with right angles. Not the yurt, it's round. So with it being round, you need to think about your furniture. Your furniture is also, most of it is made with right angles. Yeah. So thinking about how you're going to do the layout of your furniture and, and your cabinet, cabinet tree and all that, can be interesting challenge to deal with too. Yeah, we spent a lot of time um, just playing around with designs on how we wanted stuff to go and what we thought would work for us. And I think we we really did, for the most part, did a really good job about um, about laying it out and how we actually use our space. And um, it was it was a lot of work, but in the end, it, it turned out pretty good. And another challenge is dealing with temperature control. With having the yurt, and we have an older yurt, so we do have some areas where in, in the insulation there's air can come in and can go out, so that makes it not as energy efficient as it should be. And with, with that, you want to make sure you do your research. It does 
can have good R value in the insulation, but depending on where you live, you want to you may want to yeah. add extra insulation. And that's something we plan to do with ours, but that's something that is, you're going to have to deal with depending on how you plan to heat and cool your yurt. But also with ours, our windows on the outside that Velcro on are really old, and the Velcro does not work. So that I think plays a lot into ours, and um, but. For, I mean, I mean, our insulation is like a quarter of an inch thick. And for it being that minuscule, it, it really does. People are really surprised at how warm it is whenever they walk in. Yes, yurts actually do really well with the, the colder temperatures of holding the heat in. Our biggest challenge for us, as far as the temperature controlled part, actually comes in the summer, which is why we actually yeah. decided to go with uh, a more central air for our yurt. Some people decide to go off grid and stay off grid with their yurt, but for where we are and in our context, I felt like I was coming in after working outside in the heat and humidity and I came inside and was having to deal with the same thing and it felt like I was never recovering. So that was why we decided to go with the, the AC here for our yurt. And those are some of the things you have to decide for you and yourself and your, your family and your life and where you are in your context. So. Uh, but we also, as far as heating, we use a wood stove and it works really well and it's been cold and I think it's been in the 30s here today and it's actually staying very warm with our wood stove. Yeah. So uh, that is, I highly recommend a wood stove if you want to go that route. Uh, other people have done just a central heating system as well. Uh, I've heard of people doing also a split system in their yurt. So do your research and kind of find out what works for you. But it can be a challenge. There's been times when we first moved into our yurt where it was so cold outside and we were trying to heat with these electrical heaters. And not only was it cold in here, I was having a high power bill at the same time. Yeah. So that is no fun being cold, stepping out of the shower and seeing 40, 40 degrees on the heater and you're just freezing. And then you look at your power bill and you see $400 or whatever it was, yeah. that's double no fun. And then on top of that, um, it was, it was a cold winter anyway, but we had to deal with mold because it was the temperature difference wasn't that great. And so there was condensation and mold and, um, that was was not a fun winter at all. We were so happy to see spring that year, and but since we had the wood stove and it dries the air out so much, we actually have to add some moisture back into the air, and we haven't had any problems with mold or mildew or anything since then. So I I would 100% say wood stove or you know a gas heater or something like that would be the way to go. That's right. And this challenge is as far as dealing with the temperature as well as the other challenges that we face can all be overcome with the right knowledge and the right resources. So with all that said and all these different challenges that we've had to deal with with living in the yurt, I am definitely glad that we have done it. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah. Moving into the yurt and or moving into a yurt can be a cost effective way to get started on your homestead, your farm, especially if you're looking to do it as a career. It can give you a little bit more flexibility without having to have a huge mortgage to be in bondage to, so that way you can have more availability to do some of the things that you need to do in your business, whether it is on a farm or whatever it may be, if you have your own business, it can give you that flexibility without having to have a mortgage. And we actually got our yurt used on Craigslist yeah. for $8,000 for that. That's crazy. That is a, actually, it was a great deal of being able to start out start our home on our homestead for eight thousand dollars how many people can out there can say that you started your house for eight thousand dollars no not not many but another thing is it, it can be taken down and moved i mean ours is a little more permanent and we're moving in that direction to make it more permanent but um if if you are gonna be on a piece of property you know for a short amount of time there's plenty of other people that set them up and then whenever they move, they take their house with them. So that's another option. Um, especially if your building codes are not as strict or you can, it can be like a, a non-permanent structure. So those are the things you want to think about too. Oh, I forgot to mention when we talked about the building codes earlier is that if you're building as an auxiliary building, that can give you a lot of flexibility yeah. too and you won't have to deal with as much red tape so that's yeah. something to keep in mind too 
but uh, like I said, we are definitely glad that we have moved into the yurt. Uh, it's, it's been an adjustment, but like I said, it has definitely been a blessing to be able to do it and it's give us a way to be able to start our homestead. It's also a blessing that I don't have a huge amount of space to clean. Um, now, granted, a smaller space does get dirty really quick, but it can also be cleaned up really quick. And that, that has been nice, that I don't have 2,600 square feet that, that I'm cleaning, and uh, so that's an upside. So looking at all the positives in comparison to challenges, all the challenges can be overcome with the right knowledge and the right resources. And looking at things such as the temperature, temperature control, once you overcome and you figure that out, it's much cheaper to heat and cool a house this size of a yurt versus the much larger house that we lived in before. It was what, three, four times the size of this? So yeah. much more energy efficient, especially for your pocket too. And looking at things as far as adjusting to the size and pri privacy, a lot of times we go, and I grew up like this, we have these families and we have these houses when we all just kind of separate and we do our own thing and we're in our own room watching our own TV and it separates us and we continue to kind of go our own ways. Having a house this size kind of brings us together. It gives us something to do together. When we actually do watch TV, most of the time it's together. When we're eating meals, we're together. We're not all just shooting off in different ways and doing different things. Also, having a smaller space can help you be more thoughtful in the items that you actually bring into your house. So actually planning the proper furniture that you're gonna put in placement, and not just bring things in to bring things in. It can just help you live uh, a, a more content, a more thoughtful life. Well, that's it for this vlog. We plan to start a series continuing to talk about yurt living, so let us know what you think. We're also thinking of doing weekly series where we talk about different subjects, in our lives and in our family and around our farm so let us know what are some of the subjects that you would like to know and have us talk about on a regular basis but hope you enjoyed it that's it for now we'll wait, see you wait 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 what? wait wait i just wanted to remind everybody that tomorrow november 30th is the last day that you can pick up your farm fit t-shirts for a while so i want to make sure that you go out and and get your t-shirts if you want to and it, it really helps us it supports our farm supports our family and we really appreciate you doing that and thank you to everybody who's already bought one we really appreciate you well i think that's it this time i think so grow on bye <laughs> thanks for watching feel free to leave a comment below even if it's just to say hey also make sure you don't miss any of our new videos so subscribe and sign up to receive notifications each time we release a new video also you may want to check out these videos right here and also check us out on instagram facebook and twitter see you next time